That was House Speaker Anthony Rotha. It is hot summer days here in Ottawa, and you just saw the atmosphere on Parliament Hill is heating up with weeks to go before the summer break. And House Speaker Anthony Rotha's handling of rising tempers in the House of Commons is one of our press gallery plays of the week. Let's dig into that temperature on the Hill and bring in the press gallery. Joining me now are CTV a new senior digital parliamentary reporter, Rachel Ayello. She also writes the Capital Dispatch newsletter. Toronto Star columnist Susan Delacourt pens political food for thought. And we have our special guest from Searchlight Strategy Group, Greg Weston. Happy Friday. Hi. Friday. <coughs> Welcome again to Power Play. Rachel, that clip you saw is your play. Explain. Yeah, so I'm going to give my play of the week to House Speaker Anthony Rhoda for finally kind of calling MPs on their shenanigans in the House of Commons. You know, it's silly season, so kind of tensions and uh, antics in the House of Commons are dialed up a bit, but compounded between that and this foreign interference controversy and the heated rhetoric we're seeing in the House, it really has become, I would say, a bit unhinged in recent weeks and specifically this week. And I think there has been quietly a push from some MPs to see Speaker Rhoda be a bit more proactive in calling it out and he finally did that this week. Obviously you saw there he was quite angry uh, and frustrated and that was just one of a series of examples where he had to basically tell MPs who are paid by taxpayers a lot of money to do their jobs to listen to each other, not talk over each other, be respectful when other people are speaking. Like this is, I know it always happens in the House of Commons, but kindergarten stuff. Yeah, no, it's the first grade. <laughs> I was thinking first grade. Uh, yeah, yeah, even kindergarten. What? He, the, his second, his second one was. And he, I'm surprised he didn't just say shut up. Yeah, he he made a a, a comment about there. This had happened in the past. I wish I'd been there that day. A speaker actually left the chamber, and uh, you know, I um, I've been here a long time. I, um, full disclosure, and I don't. And everybody says every parliament is bad. Everyone is, you know, this happens every June. This is bad. This is really bad, what's going on in there right now. Um, I'm not casual about it. I don't think that, uh, I, I would have been as angry as Rhoda in there too. They, people, they were acting like children, screaming over each other, and he punished them too. He took their questions away for a bit. Um, but I, I think, you know, this is why what happens in the House of Commons rarely determines what happens in an election because people are not watching it and if they're inclined to watch it, they hate it and rightly they should. And if Canadians did see that, tune in, have a look, write to your MP and tell them to up their game. Or to behave. Yeah. Mm, that would be one message. Yeah. Um, so there's still three weeks left, maybe less. But right now it's three weeks. What are you watching for? I mean, not only the tone, and we know that the tone is pretty nasty. I agree with Susan. What are you watching for, Greg? Well, full disclosure, I've been around even longer than Susan. So <laughs> I, didn't I didn't want to say. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, good for Susan. Uh, look, this is um, what happens in June every every year. You're right, uh, but. It's a tone that, that gets worse, and the tone of this parliament has, has been personal, nasty, uh, and now we're going to see it just get more personal and more nasty. Uh, so I agree with Susan. It's not enough to say that it's, it's like this every year. The thing that always puts me off about this part of it is, A, nothing useful gets done as long as they're sitting there calling each other names. And secondly, for people watching it, this is what turns people off mm. politics. This is what makes people not bother to vote. Yeah. If they actually are unfortunate enough to actually sit through one of these <laughs> sessions and watch it, they would wonder why they would ever do it again. Yeah. And that, that keeps people from voting, and that is bad for the country. Yeah, it is. Susan, mm. you have a misplay. Yeah. Along the theme of politics shredding everybody in its sight, <laughs> yes. um, Poor David Johnson. Um, I want to say that, like Jagmeet Singh was saying this week, I want to say this with all respect to him. I regret what has happened to him in there. But he has made some serious missteps, I think, this week. I think if you roll back the tape and listen to why he was appointed, he was appointed, Justin Trudeau said, because some people are never going to believe me no matter what I say. It was a remarkable thing for a prime minister to say. But he said he appointed somebody to be not him, to have some distance. Twice now, David 
Johnson, in an op-ed in the Globe last week and then in his statement this week after Parliament voted, has more or less said that he and the government are working together. And this is what has given the opposition parties such an issue with this, is that Justin Trudeau was supposed to have done this to distance himself mm -hmm. and depoliticize the process. And David Johnson, in one fell swoop, has now left the impression out there that he's doing what Justin Trudeau wants him to do. And that is the last thing yeah, this process same. needs. So yeah. He works, uh, Rachel, for the government and not for Parliament, uh, right? How much of a misstep was that? I mean, what a message to MPs. Well, just frankly, as a former Governor General, to make that acknowledgement that he, while he respects the opinions of members of Parliament, his marching orders are from the government. And rightly so, the NDP and the Conservatives glom onto that and kind of bolster their argument that this isn't an independent special rapporteur by definition he's getting his marching orders from the Prime Minister and I, I do agree with Susan that I think that statement and the fact that it was drafted in advance of that vote we got that statement within an hour of the majority of MPs saying they don't have confidence in him uh, doubling down in that way I thought was uh, an interesting choice I'll say that strange days isn't it on the <laughs> hill it's not <clears throat> very hot it's <clears throat> hot in Parliament <laughs> you've got a misplay Greg well Going in the same direction as, as Susan, my misplay is for the government. I mean, this has now become a government problem with David Johnson, and um, my misplay is specifically probably for the Prime Minister's office because it would be their, their call for not giving David Johnson at least a marginally graceful way to exit from this. It doesn't matter whether his recommendations were right or wrong. Uh, his recommendation that he would now lead uh, some sort of uh, public hearings is going to be a gong show. It is not going to accomplish anything. It's not going to end well. And so it is incumbent upon the government to step up the plate and give him a way to walk away from this um, before he, his reputation is completely left in, in tatters. What's happening to him now is painful, um, and it's only going to get worse. And there is no other way out of it other than showing him to the exit. I don't have a lot of time left, but I want to ask both <clears throat> of you, should he go, and is there a dignified way for him to do so? Um he shouldn't go until after Tuesday's Procedure and House Affairs Committee meeting in which he's going to be questioned for three hours by MPs, which is kind of the irony in them wanting him to leave, but then also wanting to question him. Um, so based on how this week went, I am very curious to see how those three hours are going to go. I, I, I've been saying since last week he's got to let somebody else do the public hearings, I think, you know, yeah. but I don't even know that those, I think it was Rachel who said last week, Who's going to want to participate yeah. in those public hearings now? And, yeah. and, and what is a dignified way out for yeah. David Johnson at this point, right? Yeah. Well, we'll see you next week on Tuesday. <laughs> Rachel Ayello, Susan Delacourt, Greg Weston, have a fabulous weekend. Thanks for being here. And